Great, thank you, uh, thank you very much. Um, my name is uh, Finn Donnelly, the Member of Parliament for Port Moody for Quitlam. And uh, on behalf of Parliament of Canada, I'd like to uh, <coughs> welcome you to this exciting day event. It's uh, fantastic to see so many of you here. And I think we should acknowledge uh, that this is uh, Ron McKinnon's riding as well. So I know he's uh, a strong proponent of what's going on. He's the MP for Coquitlam Court for Coquitlam. And, and as was mentioned, we have two MLAs with us, Joan Isaac and uh, Selena Robinson. So uh, thank you both for coming out, uh, uh, representing our uh, the provincial legislature. And uh, as was mentioned, uh, Chris Wilson uh, is a Coquitlam City Councillor and I know that Laura DuPont is a, a poor Coquitlam City Councillor who's uh, active on the Coquitlam River Roundtable. So uh, thank you to uh, all of those uh, elected officials. And thank you to all of you for coming out, the stewards uh, who make our, our watersheds and uh, the amazing biodiversity that we enjoy in British Columbia. I uh, conserve, protect, and restore that. So uh, thank you to all the good work that you do. And I do want to uh, just give a special acknowledgement to Melissa Dick. Uh, for uh, the coordinator here for her good work and also to Margaret Birch yeah. in the city of Coquitlam. Yeah. I was uh, fortunate enough to work with Margaret who is uh, I think a true champion and uh, we're very lucky to have her in Coquitlam uh, and the work that she's done uh, sometimes quietly behind the scenes but very passionately and, uh, and with a great deal amount of knowledge uh, with, uh, with the watershed. So um, it's a pleasure to, to have Margaret uh, doing the work that she does and Melissa now in this critical position as the roundtable coordinator. And, and the, the process has come uh, quite a ways. And I know I was asked to share a few words about uh, you know, where, where this process has come from, uh, from my early days as a Coquitlam City Councillor in early 2000s when we started the Environment uh, Advisory Committee. Uh, and then, because the Coquitlam River was on the endangered rivers list for so many years, uh, with a focal point uh, really at the uh, aggregate industry and uh, industry and the uh, companies along the river and impacting the river, there was a focus on uh, what became affectionately known as the Coquitlam River Aggregate Task Force or Coquitlam Aggregate Committee, correct? <laughs> and uh, the track uh, had a real uh, attention and focus on trying to address in a positive way uh, this, you know, the impacts uh, on the river. But what ended up happening with the aggregate committee is it, it brought in other players because it, they often said, well, it, well, it's not just the aggregate impacts, it's urban development. It, it, there's many other impacts. So, of course, uh, that meant bringing in the two cities. Uh, obviously, we had uh, Coquitlam there, but we, we brought in Coquit or Port Coquitlam. Uh, we had, uh, you know, we had to have the provincial government, uh, Fisheries and Oceans, uh, BC Hydro, uh, Metro Vancouver. Uh, so that it, it started to grow, and that right then became, uh, well, we need a bigger process beyond uh, just focusing on on the aggregate committee, uh, and that's what evolved eventually into the Coquitlam River Roundtable. And of course, the, the needed component to that was the community, which I think now is very well represented in this room. So uh, you can see over the years how long sometimes processes take, but now we're at a point where this is very exciting, where we're today looking at funding mechanisms. I know that's not very sexy for a lot of people outside this room, but for inside this room, this is an absolutely critical uh, function, is how do we get the necessary funds to do the good work that uh, you are all doing. So I'm very excited to uh, hear the outcome of today. Um, I know there's going to be discussion uh, about uh, other parts of the, the province that are doing some exciting work with uh, even looking at ideas of taxation for watersheds. Uh, fantastic, uh, this is great. We need to look at how do we fund in an ongoing way to make a real change in our community. Um, I just wanted to finish uh, with two things. Uh, one, I know Kim Stevens is uh, coming up as your keynote speaker, and uh, one thing that Kim pointed out to, to me uh, just a few years ago when I was a member of Parliament, but it was, he focused on when I was a city councillor and I brought uh, 
you know, a, a seemingly meaningless minor change to an OCP amendment way back in the day. It was, it was a couple of words that I made a, an amendment. And I looked at the OCP and at the time it was talking about developing watersheds before or during the development process. And I thought, or during? That's ridiculous. So I, I made a motion to get rid of or during. And luckily, I will say, my colleagues didn't really know what I was talking <laughs> about. And so it passed. I don't know, it, I don't think it was unanimous, but I think it was a majority. So those two little words went on to make significant change, as Kim points out. And uh, while the work can be sometimes uh, very, very difficult and very specific, those changes can go on to be precedent setting, as, as Kim likes to uh, uh, make me become aware, because if watershed plans happen before development in one city, many of the other cities start saying, well, you know, if Coquitlam is getting it, you know, we've got to keep up with them. So that, that is a, it's a really significant point that if we can get, and that's what we're looking at today on the island, uh, something very significant has happened. Can we get that happening here in the Tri-Cities? If we can get that happening, maybe there's other places in the Fraser Valley and up, up the Fraser and within, uh, within British Columbia that will look at this. So very, very good work of keep focused uh, and, and keep working on this. The last thing I want to mention is because so many uh, stewards in the room here uh, have a focus on uh, what was, it has become very uh, in the news lately and that's this cutting of the salmon in the classroom program. Um, I've been up in the house in the last week, uh, the most I've ever been up, uh, which is great, and that's because of your reaction. Uh, so many teachers and, and uh, stewards have responded. It's, it's one of the, the biggest responses I've seen uh, to a, uh, uh, what was called a small cut, because in the face of a really amazing announcement, the, the Liberal government was announcing over $1.4 billion back into DFO, much needed funds after a decade of cuts. Uh, so this is supposed to be a good announcement. It was completely sidetracked with a small four or 500,000 a year cut to a fantastic uh, tried and true program where over a million students in 40 years have gone through this incredible program. So I had an opportunity to get up and ask the minister to reverse that cut. Um, now, I can't tell you publicly or officially, but quietly, I'm very uh, confident the minister will reverse that decision at the end of this summer. So, and that's, I think, part, uh, in, in uh, much credit to you and your hard work. And I will say, please don't let up. Keep going until we hear that announcement publicly. Keep the pressure up. And uh, we will, we will uh, have that program back in. And, uh, we will have much needed funds to the stewards and, and to the teachers and those that do the fantastic work like you're going to do today. So thanks for letting me share a few words and uh, thanks for all the good work you do. Cheers.